Hi, it's Sherry. Welcome back to Canterbury Cottage. Last week, I asked you to tell me what you would most like to see in upcoming videos. And boy, did you guys deliver. You came up with the best ideas. I really appreciate all of your suggestions and I will genuinely try to include as many as possible in upcoming videos. Ornaments was by far the most requested project and so that's what today's video is all about. I tried to come up with a wide variety of ideas including an ornament that creates a new family tradition. So if that sounds good to you, let's get started. This first idea is for those viewers who requested nature or woodland themed ornaments. I'm using the wood rounds from Dollar Tree, but I think wood slices would be super cute. First, I stained my wood rounds using some watered down antiquing wax. Then I printed out these woodland animal images on t-shirt transfer paper for light fabrics. I cut a large circle out of the transfer paper making sure the animal image was in the center. I placed the image face down on the wood round and then ironed it with a hot dry iron for about a minute. Then I carefully peeled off the paper backing to reveal the image. I lightly sanded around the top edge of the wood round to remove any excess transfer paper. To dress up the edges of the wood round, I covered it with burlap trim from Dollar Tree, and then I hot glued on some small pieces of fake pine branches and some tiny pine cones. If you want a crisper, more colorful image, this is how it looked when I applied the transfer first and the antiquing wax after. Here's an ornament idea for those of you who like using supplies from Dollar Tree. Buy a package of those tiny buckets and spray paint them whatever color you like. Print out these botanical images that I made in a small size to fit the buckets. Apply Mod Podge to the back of each botanical label and adhere it to the side of the bucket. Add styrofoam to each bucket. I like to recycle styrofoam from thrifted floral arrangements. Using floral scraps you already have or some purchased at Dollar Tree, add fake stems to each bucket that somewhat match the botanical label. Finish off each bucket by covering the styrofoam with Spanish or sheet moss. If you want a snowy effect, spray the greenery with some spray adhesive and then lightly sprinkle on some fake snow. Add a bow or use ribbon to create a loop for hanging. I think these would look cute on a tiered tray or as ornaments hanging on your tree. This next project is my favorite idea for using clear glass ornaments. I like to use the square cube ones from Hobby Lobby, but the flat disc shape ones would work too. Use old Christmas cards or print out vintage Christmas images to fit the back of your ornament. Apply a thin, even coat of Mod Podge to the front of your image and to the back of your ornament. 
place the image face side down on the back of the ornament and then gently smooth out the paper. When the Mod Podge is completely dry, apply another coat of Mod Podge on the back of the paper and while it is still wet, sprinkle on some glitter in a color that coordinates with your image. I recommend spraying a top coat over the glitter to help prevent shedding. Then fill your ornament about a fourth of the way full with fake snow or whatever ornament filler you would like to use. Sparkly sequins and miniature Christmas lights are both good options. I even used a couple Santa erasers. Then attach a ribbon for hanging purposes. Although it's not necessary, if you want a more finished look, you could hot glue rick rack, pipe cleaners, or other trim around the edge of the image. Because many of you requested ideas for repurposing old Christmas cards, I wanted to make sure they would work on the glass ornaments. The paper is heavier, so it's harder to work with than the printed images, but it turned out just fine, and I was able to add an additional image to the front of the ornament. Now, for all the snowman lovers, this next project is for you. Start with some cheap wood blocks and spray paint them white. Use Zinsser Primer to hide any printing on the blocks. Distress the edges with sandpaper when the paint is dry. Then, super glue three blocks together, angling each block a bit so they are not just stacked perfectly one on top of the other. To create a carrot nose, I cut the points off a small wooden star that came in a package of wood pieces, and then I painted it orange and super glued it to the top block. I used a black paint pen to create buttons, eyes, and a mouth for the snowman. Then I painted some pink circles for his cheeks. I cut a small strip of fabric off of a thrifted scarf to create a scarf for the snowman. To create a hat, I cut a wider piece off of the end of the scarf and then rolled the raw edge over two times and hot glued it in place. I hot glued the rolled end of the scarf around the top block. I wrapped some thread around the fringed end and tightened it and then tied it in a knot to hold it in place. To create arms, I drilled two holes, one on each side of the middle block at a slight angle and then hot glued a small stick in each hole. To create a cape, I cut off the opposite end of the scarf and rolled the raw end a couple times and hot glued it in place. And then I cut two small holes for the stick arms to fit through. I decided to make a belt for one of the snowmen using a small buckle that I had. And then I made him earmuffs using small pom-poms that I had. To create a hanger for the snowman, I drilled a small hole in the top center block 
and then inserted two ends of a small piece of twine into the hole and added some super glue. To coordinate my snowmen, I created four different outfits out of one piece of fabric, but an easier option would be to make scarves for all of the snowmen in different but coordinating fabrics. If you're wanting to start a new family tradition, this next ornament is for you. Using the labels I have provided, create an ornament where family members can list their blessings from the past year, or list their wishes for the upcoming year, or create a time capsule listing their top memories from the past year. Using Mod Podge, attach the label to the front of a small glass or clear plastic jar. Roll up some small pieces of paper and tie with pretty twine or ribbon and place inside the jar. Drill a small hole in the center of the lid and then run some twine through it tying a knot on the back side to create a loop to hang from the tree. Add ribbon or any other embellishments you like. As an alternative, put the rolled up sheets of paper inside a large clear ornament and attach the label to the outside of the ornament with some ribbon or twine. You could decoupage the label to a small piece of wood if you want to make something more permanent. Many of you liked the little books that I created in my tiered tray video, and so I thought we should make some little books to hang on the Christmas tree. Cut up a couple old paperback books. I used a miter saw, but you could use scissors or a utility knife, but it will take much longer. Print out some Christmas book cover images on cardstock in sizes to fit your little books. Use Mod Podge to attach the little book covers to the front of your book. If you use my images, I have also included a color coordinated back piece to Mod Podge to the back of your book, but you could cover the back of the book with a piece of scrapbook paper. To create a hanger for your book, Take a loop of a ribbon and place it along the binding on the inside center of your book and hot glue it in place. If you saw my Christmas Village video, then you might remember that Michael's had some nice birdhouses for only 99 cents. To begin, I removed the bird perch from both houses and painted the roof, the base, and the chimney. When the paint was dry, I distressed the edges with 220 grit sandpaper. I printed out some vintage Christmas images on cardstock in a size to fit the front of the birdhouse. I pressed the image against the front of the birdhouse and creased it along the edges so that I would know where to cut. After cutting it out, I adhered it to the front of the birdhouse, applying Mod Podge, 
both to the front of the birdhouse and to the back of the piece of cardstock. I decided to repurpose old Christmas cards to cover the other three sides of the birdhouse. You could, of course, use a Christmas card on the front of the birdhouse if you like. I decided to cover the chimney with small pieces of Christmas cards, but I left the roof plain. Instead, I glued some trim along the roof edge. I used pipe cleaner on one of the houses and a pine stem on the other. I hot glued a small tree and a snowman inside the fence. I also used pipe cleaner and some rickrack to create a garland for the little fence. Then I sprayed the roof and all four sides of the house with adhesive spray and sprinkled on white glitter. As I was getting ready to throw away my Christmas card scraps, I decided that I wanted to add some of the words from the cards to the roofs of the houses. And so I cut them out, hot glued them to the roof, and then sprayed them with adhesive spray and sprinkled on glitter. These next projects are easy ornaments that would be fun to make with your children or grandchildren. Pick up some Christmas tree shaped ornaments from Dollar Tree or do like I did and just cut triangles out of scrap wood you already have. One cute way of decorating the tree shape is to glue ribbon scraps across it. Add any little embellishments that you like. Drill a small hole in the center of the bottom and glue in a piece of stick for the trunk. If it doesn't have a hole, drill a small hole near the top for a piece of twine. For a more neutral tree, you could cover your piece of wood with scraps of old lace and fringe. Another idea for covering your tree is to use faux ceiling tiles. I found some in the dollhouse section at Hobby Lobby, which was much cheaper than buying it at Lowe's or Home Depot. I attached it to the wood tree using hot glue, and then I painted it with a couple coats of chalk paint and followed that with a little antiquing wax. To create a stand for the tree, I covered an old spool with a piece of ribbon. Then I took a stick and glued one end of the stick into the spool and the other end of the stick to the back of the tree. Then I was ready to add embellishments. I hot glued a couple buttons to the spool and then I glued on a pine cone and a ribbon in between the tree and the spool. I made another tree in a similar manner to the ceiling tile tree, only this time I decoupaged some vintage Christmas music to the front of the wood. I found the sheet music online and printed it out in a small size, but if you have real vintage sheet music, you could of course use that too. Another option is to paint and distress the wood tree and then apply images using Mod Podge. You could print out images or cut some from old Christmas cards. Finish it off by hot gluing on a little greenery and a tiny pine cone. Because these ornaments are flat, they are perfect for attaching to a gift. And if you attach your tree to a spool, you could display it on a tiered tray. Just leave off the hanger at the top.
This next idea is for those of you looking for ways to repurpose sentimental or thrifted jewelry. Refresh a large thrifted flower such as a poinsettia by trimming off the frayed edges. Remove any centerpieces to create a good spot to adhere your piece of jewelry. I was using a brooch and so I used wire snippers to remove the pin on the back and then I hot glued it to the center of the flower. I made a large bow and wired it to the stem of the flower. I also wired on a couple stems of greenery and then I used florist tape to clean up the stem and cover all of the wires. This would look so pretty just stuck between the Christmas tree branches. A watch face also looks really nice in the center of a large flower. For the next ornament, I snipped off the large jewel from a ring and hot glued it to the side of a fake bird. To dress up the bird even more, I glued on some fake leaves and some glass beads from Dollar Tree. Then I applied some adhesive spray and sprinkled on some white glitter. I attached a brooch to another bird that I had, and this time I tried adhering beads by applying Mod Podge to the bird, and it was somewhat successful. Those of you that make jewelry, could you tell me what kind of glue should I actually have used here? Because I glued the brooch directly to the clip on the bottom of the bird, I needed to create another hanger, and so I pressed a small hole in the back of the bird and pressed in a loop of ribbon and added a little hot glue to hold it in place. I also added some gold glitter to her belly. Isn't she so pretty? For this bird, I took the pendant off of a necklace and hot glued it to the clip on the bottom of the bird. And then I cut a small piece of the necklace chain and super glued it in her beak. To create a hanger, I cut off the necklace clasp and hot glued it to her back. I gave her a little sprinkling of white glitter too. My last ornament idea is the easiest one of all. Spray paint some small frames that you're no longer using. Distress them with sandpaper if you like. Print out the sheet music for some of your favorite Christmas carols in a size to fit your frames. Return the cardboard back, tearing off the stand if there is one because you may be able to see the back of the frame when it's hanging in your Christmas tree, cover the back with a pretty piece of scrapbook paper or an old Christmas card. Cut it to fit and use glue stick to adhere it. To create a hanger for your frame, drill a small hole in the top center of your frame and then screw in a small eye hook. You can then attach a hook or a small ribbon to the eye hook. Embellish the frame if you like. I think a few sprigs of greenery and some berries and a little bow look very nice. I was really pleased with how all the ornaments turned out this week. I think the Putz Houses are my favorite 
but I can't really decide. I'm really curious as to which ornament was your favorite. Now for the contest winners. Thank you all so much for watching and leaving me such lovely comments. Here are the names from last week's video randomly selected to receive a $75 Amazon gift card. If your name is on the list, please email me so I can arrange to send it to you. Mary Ann Z. Reynolds, Dawn Kidd, Marty Boland, Love is Kind Walling, Creative Lori, Sherry Lewis, Migdalia Sanchez, Tracy Stanzioni Rothwell, Deb Brewer, and Charlotte D. Well, that's all for today. Have a great week. See you next Tuesday. Bye-bye for now.